Good morning. Thank you very much for joining this session. Um, so uh, I would like to start with how the democratization of AR has happened. Uh, 20 years back, uh, AR was a niche technology. If you want to superimpose an AR experience, it is an orchestration of very, very uh, customized development of hardware and software. But post-2009, after the smartphone arena, and also uh, development of parallel technologies that includes you know, maturity in the 3D graphics pipelines, maturity in the machine learning and computer vision technology, everything has enabled or orchestrated so that today consumers have AR in their hands. Just to give an example, uh, the one I'm showing you here was actually an initial measurement unit. It's a crown jewel in uh, space industry. It gives you the 3D pose. 40 years back, it was costing about a million dollar and an electromechanical system weighing 22 kg. Today, BOSS supplies the same functionality on a MEMS-based chip called BN055, weighing about three grams and retailing about three euros. So a million times reduction in cost, a million times reduction in price. Um, and that enables most of our VR headgears, hand controllers, and stuff like that. So this uh, orchestration of uh, several software pipelines, even you have a quad-core processors, um, uh, and also the new generation technology that is powering our uh, headgears and everything has enabled AR once like a, a space technology into the hands of the developers today. So. What I will be focusing in my talk would be how the democratization can be done in the enterprise sector with augmented reality. Uh, we have about eight years working on this technology from 2012, and uh, we figured out a couple of areas in enterprise that make sense. So I will try to give a brief view of what all, what all uh, sectors we have applied AR, both for our internal as well as for the external customers. Primarily, it blocks down into two main sectors. One is the training solutions, uh, leveraging the XR uh, technology for training, and how it could help and uh, productively do the maintenance and repair. I'll talk with uh, uh, one of the case study uh, where we have majorly applied our augmented reality power trainings. If you see over the last one decade, even in the automotive industry, there are a lot of technology innovations because of electrification and autonomization. Uh, today, if you take a modern car, uh, which has the cruise control on an ADAS system, it has more than about 80 ECUs. And there is a major drive towards from a gasoline-powered engines towards electrification. That means the operators or the mechanics who has to service these cars needs to be completely trained on the new technologies in, augment, in, um, auto, uh, in automotive industry. So we are leveraging uh, 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 augmented reality and its related technologies to keep uh, the training or the transition from uh, older automotive technology to new automotive technology using augmented reality. So some of the customer requirements is the, the, the Technical information is pretty complex. As I said, the modern car has about 80 ECUs. And we, uh, every time you need to train on a new car, you need to lease this car, and then you need to uh, conduct a training session, and it costs. So is there a possibility to optimize the costs? And also providing detailed training on the internal subsystems. So sometimes it would require us to tamper the, tamper the car to decommission subsystems and do this and ability to provide remote trainings. Today, there's a flying expert who goes to several training institutes and train them. Can we do it like a remote training so that it's, uh, it's, it optimizes the traveling cost? So we have a solution uh, built based on these customer requirements uh, called Training 4.0, which uses a trainee trainer concept. Um, the trainer, uh, everyone is using the XR devices. The training steps are synchronized and uh, it, it keeps the trainer in loop, it controls so that he could deliver the training in an appropriate way. And uh, we understood, uh, even though uh, the costs are a little bit higher side with respect to the high-end uh, eye gears, but even a tablet could deliver a decent experience of AR. 
So we have a cross-device training solution that would work across HoloLens uh, and Android and iOS tablets. And also the ability to naturally interact and examine the virtual parts without tampering a machine, without tampering an automotive is a, is a very interesting feature so that there's a lot of optimization of costs could happen. You can actually have a virtual car with uh, virtual parts and you could conduct a more realistic training uh, system. I'll just show you a video of... Uh, So this, uh, the demo which you have seen in this video is already available in the Bosch booth in the expo. Uh, so please feel free to go and uh, keep your hands on with that. Okay. So the, the, the main drive to apply this was first of all, uh, even I'm a, I'm a software engineer, but most of my knowledge of automotive I gained when I'm creating the content for this automotive. So it, it's, it really works. You, when, you, when you see this in 3D in an interactive way and you keep your hand dirty with it, your knowledge retains. Uh, there are uh, studies done to prove this. And it also, basically for us, uh, we, we, we do massive trainings. I am talking about like per year about 15,000 trainer operators get trained and more than 1,500 kind of training sessions. So. It, it, it gives us a lot of savings when it comes to the vehicle setup or delivery because virtually you could just create a virtual model and create these sessions. And it enabled uh, on-demand retraining. So uh, if, uh, if you provide this as a tablet app, then the, even the operators could see at any point of time as a revision, like an own time study. And it will definitely eliminate travel costs uh, with this remote feature and it reduces training time or extended content. So basically, uh, very complex uh, information can be uh, created creatively using this 3D animations and could be delivered, which is very difficult to explain in normal sense. Now I switch from the automotive to the other segment where we are applying this uh, XR-enabled training. Uh, take a use case of a, a fast-moving consumer goods company or an automotive parts production company. It, uh, if I take a cigarette manufacturing, they produce about 12,000 parts per minute. And in this scenario, if I have to stop the production line and train my operator uh, for his regular training, it's a huge loss of production. Similarly, uh, uh, if, and these equipments are typically paper sensitive processing equipment are typically uh, very niche and uh, during the training process or during trying to simulate a fault, if the machine goes down, then it's a huge, uh, again, a production stoppage because an expert has to fly over from abroad to fix this. Can there be a technology alternative? Um, and this is where we are using uh, currently a virtual reality enabled training where uh, using the VR headgears, we can actually teleport a person into a, a virtual factory based on the CAD data. You can actually create a one-to-one -one size correspondences so that exactly what, what, what his interactions are also uh, in the similar ways to the real world environment. So the training can happen in three modes, guided mode, where he will be guided about what are the steps he needs to follow. Then there could be also a, a test mode where is, there is no guidance and then he could test himself how he is performing it. So, uh, and you could provide it in your local language. In India, we have applied it for seven plants in seven different states. 
Every state has a different local language. So we created content once and, uh, and used it as is. It's, it's, it works especially very, very good uh, training systems if you, are, if you are trying to train someone with hands-on practices. Yeah? Uh, we also have something called 14 quality principles in Bosch. That uh, it's a code of conduct in the manufacturing plant how they should uh, uh, how they should behave. For example, if you are doing a, uh, an assembly process and a part falls down, you cannot just take the for, uh, part and try to assemble it. You need to properly put it in a no bin to avoid all the electrostatic discharges. So these are all things we gamified it so that a person can actually a 20 minutes focus training of the quality principles with some gaming. So we create situations and see how he responds in VR, and then we certify it. So these are, these are uh, uh, enterprise-wide, if you have such common practices, they can be made into a VR game and, and you know, deployed as a training material. Uh, this is the extension, what we are looking at, uh, uh, not just the hands and the head, but also more and more joints to be enabled especially uh, with body, full body tracking suits, we could actually get finger level movement and also various other body parts, we could move it. We are working with one of our partner, Hollow Suit, uh, and we could provide much more newer uh, insights, like for example, ergonomics, whether when he does a virtual assembly or even he can actually wear the suit and do a real assembly and see how the ergonomic score is, whether this, this, this design is okay or not. So uh, this, this covers the training part. The other major area where we see AR is definitely helpful is in the maintenance and repair. And this is probably a, like a domain agnostic. It could be applied in industries, automotive, utilities, wherever it is. So getting, um, um, getting your enterprise information uh, in real time to the field uh, in, a, in a place where you are in the field and when you require it is very important. So, and also, if, if there is CAD data for this, you could create repair animations and you could superimpose it in this. Okay, uh, many reasons is then you don't require experts flying around. You could actually have your local field team, with the help of augmented reality, fix some concrete problems. And uh, in fact, there are, there are chances that if you, if you have a service level agreements, wherein there are very stringent constraints of you know, uh, you going and supporting there. You could also give an AR app uh, with service manual uh, to your customers so that they could at least do, uh, you know, first aid in a, in a very, very effective way when there is a scenario happening. And uh, if, if there are industries where there's a lot of attrition and your skilled experts are moving, then AR-based uh, maintenance and repair would definitely be a good case to go. Uh, one of the very active area, because Bosch has about uh, 15,000 car services and uh, we do a lot of OEM-based uh, 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 repair, uh, repair, repair manuals and service instructions. These are some of the uh, applications where we have already applied. A simple use case. Let's say you are an you are a automotive repair guy and you figured out there is a fault in an ECU. The traditional way is you you take the map and you actually see the wiring harness on the 2D and try to map it to the 3D. With, uh, with, with uh, 3D tracking and with devices like HoloLens, uh, we should be able to very precisely see where your wiring harness runs on the machine and you could go and fix it. Not only that, it could be, let's say you, you can, um, uh, with, with the interactivity, you could actually go back to your 2D sheets and 3D sheets, uh, actually 3D world. So this is what we have developed called Active Schematics. Active Schematics is uh, the technology behind uh, generating these wiring diagrams also, and how we have integrated augmented reality and delivered solutions. Very pretty useful, uh, especially these are the serious cases where augmented reality is the most useful function. It, it really helps in, uh, the, the technicians are already good, so if they are guided in the right way, they can fix the things very quickly. Other area, um, uh, from the equipment AR, we all can also do the spatial AR. So this is an example of what we did with our corporate research department. It's actually a building information model that is superimposed um, in the real world. 
And not only that, we could actually interact with it. Suppose I am seeing a particular generator, uh, I could get um, uh, a collider written that, okay, I'm seeing this and I could actually get uh, dialogues to control that or even visualize the data in a, in a very, very uh, systematic way. Here you can see uh, we are trying to control, uh, let's say I'll be trying to control the, uh, the window shutter up and down. You'll just see this in the video. Just the power of uh, augmented reality, it understands the context where you're looking at and it could return you uh, the controls that you could control with. So here what we are showing is a shutter position we are controlling with augmented reality. Imagine having this on a, um, uh, just a hollow lens or an eye gear, you just see something and you do a gesture and it comes down. Yeah. So we, we see definitely the, uh, the, the contextual uh, interactions with augmented reality will give very good compelling use cases around. Okay. This helps our building maintenance teams to pinpoint exactly where the equipment is and you can go and disassemble that and repair it. Yeah. So what, how do we enable all these things at, a, at an enterprise level or very productively creating this augmented reality? So we don't do it like custom projects. Wherever possible, we try to have a platform approach. So this is the platform Bosch has built, which enables its internal content creation and also for the external customers. So what we have is uh, a, a, an authoring suit wherein a non-programmer can create AR experiences using uh, simple drag and drop tools and a uh, uh, bit of XML authoring. You could create an, XM, uh, an AR scenario and then uh, deploy it in an uh, AR server so that this can be used by uh, your global uh, stakeholders. It could be technicians, marketing colleagues, uh, uh, experts, or whatever it is. So basically, uh, a, a non-programmer creates AR content, deployed on AR server, and then downloaded into AR clients. And these are multi-mode. Multi you can deploy from the smart tablets to iGear to the mobile phones. And it can be cached so that you can download it. If you are in a typically in a place where there's no good infrastructure or the network, you could still download it and go there and service with this. Yeah. So these are the internal uh, details of what we have with the authoring side. We have a, uh, uh, an array of tools like XML editor, AR 3D editor, and tracking editor, so that you even they, they can actually um, uh, do the tracking configuration and then publish it where, where we take care of your enterprise security so that everything is encrypted and available and then it's available to the training clients. Okay, so typically we, uh, uh, we figured out a model in which, because enterprise is always uh, custom. So we need to figure out for your enterprise domain how an AR technology could be enabled. This could be coming in a consultation phase where we take a MVP of your problem, try to create a, a solution for it. And then very important thing uh, is we look at scale, its scalability. So how that solution has to be formulated so that it scales. It should be easily scalable. Not We are not talking about uh, 10 or 20 uh, scenarios, but couple of hundreds to thousands of scenarios so that it could be like an enterprise-wide rollout. And then how to deploy them so that, and then how to maintain it so that we, as, as the years progress, we have new and new generation devices. We need to keep supporting on a quarterly basis. Uh, the, 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 the client software should be updated and it's available. So we work with an array of technologies uh, to make this happen both software, hardware, and everything. So thank you very much for your time. And my special thanks to all the smart device uh, developers, the 3D researchers, the computer vision engineers, who have actually made this happen. Who Something as niche as a space technology is in the hands of consumers today. Thank you very much. I, I believe we have exciting time. <laughs>